The message you're about to listen to is by Reverend Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. Remain blessed as you listen. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, where we search it. The spirit of the man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of what? The belly. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of what? The belly. So we've said that man is a spirit in the class of God. Man is a spirit in the class of God. Man is a spirit that has a soul and lives where? In a body. Man is not a soul, neither is man a body. Man is first and foremost what? A spirit. Man is first and foremost what? A spirit. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that man is not what your, his eyes report to him. Your eyes and your senses would not be an accurate representation or information of who man is. When you look at a man physically, all right, you cannot, based on what your eyes report, say this is who this man is. You will be wrong. Please confirm for me that we have no problem on the live stream. Praise God. Are we good? Facebook and YouTube, are we okay, Fisayo? All right, good. So you cannot, you cannot define a man based on what your eyes can see. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, all right, Paul says, no, now we know no man. No, we know man after what? The flesh. So that means we cannot describe any man in Christ afterwards, the flesh. We cannot use physical parameters to what? To define who the man in Christ is. Because if we did that, we will be wrong. Praise God. Praise God. So man is a spirit, all right, in the class of God. Man is a spirit that has a soul and lives in the body. Now, when we say man is a spirit in the class of God, what we are saying is that man has a capacity to fellowship with God. Amen. Amen. Because every creature, glory to God, in the, every creature, all right, that is in the same class as another is able to communicate and fellowship with that creature. So a dog can talk to a dog, right? Praise the Lord. They, all right, when dogs back, so you is backing, but to another dog is talking. So when a dog backs to another dog, all right, what you are seeing between the two dogs is that they are having a what? A communication. There is an exchange of what? Information. So to you, because you are not in the dog class, you can hear the barking, all right? You, you are hearing the communication between the dogs as barking. So you are hearing the communication between the dogs as noise, praise God. But there is a communication going on. There is a fellowship going on between those dogs. Are you paying attention? Now, man is in a class. Man is a spirit in a class of God. What that means is that man has the capacity to communicate with God. And God communicates with man. Hallelujah. So there is a fellowshipping together, a speaking together between God and man that is normal because man is a spirit in the class of God. Praise the Lord. Now look at Job chapter 32 verse 8. Very interesting. Job 32 verse 8. It says there is a spirit in man. There is a spirit in man. All right, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. That word inspiration is the Hebrew neshima. Neshima means breath, the breathings, all right, the breathings of God. Like where we see in Genesis 2 7, and God breathed unto um, him the bread of life. You understand? So he's letting you know that there is a capacity to understand, a capacity to see beyond the natural that is present in man. But it is only the what? The inspiration of the Almighty that brings that understanding to man. Hallelujah. Where does he bring that understanding to? He brings the understanding to the man's spirit. So we said man is a spirit that has a soul and lives in the body. What does that tell us? It means that because man is a spirit, he can contact the spiritual realm. Amen. And the spiritual realm can contact him. Get what I said? All right. He can contact the spiritual realm. And the spiritual realm can what? Can contact him. He can also contact the soulish realm, which is soul. Praise God. 
all right, and it can contact the physical realm with his body. Hallelujah. Just a moment. I am monitoring what's going on online, and something is not right. Please sort it out. Praise God. All right, so man is a spirit that has a soul and lives in the body. With his spirit, he contacts the spirit realm. Amen. So in prayer, what are you doing? You are contacting what? The spirit realm. When you are praying in the Holy Ghost, you are contacting the what? The spirit realm. Are you following what I'm saying? All right. When you are having visions and, and dreams and all, all right, you are having fellowship with the realm of the spirit. Praise God. Why is that possible? Because you are a man. Hallelujah. It is possible because you are a what? You are a man. Man is a spirit, first and foremost. You must be conscious in that truth and that reality is that you are a spirit. Say that I am a spirit. Louder, I am a spirit. Very important. All right? If you think and you actually have that mindset that you are a spirit, it changes a lot of things for you. Because you will begin to approach things and realities from the standpoint of the fact that you are a spirit. Remember I said last week, I said that you are, not a, um, you are not an earthly person looking for a supernatural, a spiritual experience. All right? Your realities, when we're talking about your realities and your identity, the earthly doesn't come first. You are a spirit man, first and foremost, having an earthly experience. Praise God. You are a spirit man, first and foremost, having a what? an earthly experience that is the fact that is who you are as a christian and you actually have to have that mindset i am a spirit man that is having what an earthly experience a spirit man having an earthly experience which therefore means my focus as a christian my focus as an individual is spirit first are you following Spirit first. So if I want to define a condition, if I want to define a, an issue, if I want to describe an issue, I will first and foremost start my description from what realm? From the spirit realm and not the what? The earthly realm. Because I am a spirit man, glory to God, that is having an earthly experience. All right? When a man dies, his spirit leaves his body. Does his spirit cease to exist? No. It means that the man, the spirit, continues, all right, in his identity in another reality. And that reality is in the what? In the spirit dimension. Because the spirit dimension is home to that man. Hallelujah. You have to train yourself to be more at home in the spirit, glory to God, than you are in the physical. Because the physical is not your home. The physical is a visiting place. You are visiting this realm. For 70 years, 50 years, 60 years, 90 years, 110 years, no matter the number of years you stay here, you are visiting this realm. Your true home is in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Bible tells us in Psalm 90, it says that God is our dwelling place since the eternal generations. He is our dwelling place. He's our home. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Yeah. So we've said, when the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 20, 27, it says the spirit of a man is a candle of the Lord. Is the light of the Lord. So <laughs> that means, if the spirit of a man is the light of the Lord, it means if the Lord is going to direct that man, he's going to direct him through what? His spirit. And a man must be continually conscious of his spirit man, of who he is in his spirit, praise God, hallelujah, to be able to receive constant and continuous direction from the Lord. Remember, we've said, that the believer in Christ is the home address of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. All right. Can we turn in there? 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Then we look at 1 Corinthians. Is it 1 Corinthians 6, 16 or 2 Corinthians 6, 16? Know ye not that ye are the what? Temple of God. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Hold on. Now, the Spirit of a man, all right, is the candle of the Lord, searching all the world in what parts of his belly. Now, when he says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of his belly, that, that's a proverb speaking. We now know that in the New Testament, with New Testament understanding, when he says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly, the spirit of the man he's talking about is the spirit of the man that has been what? Born again. Hallelujah. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, 
on verse 7 down to 12, he says, What thing, uh, what man knoweth the things of a man, save the what the spirit of a man that dwelleth within him? And what man knoweth the things of the of God, except the what? The spirit of God, what? That dwelleth within him. All right, then to verse 12, he says, We have received what? The spirit of God, that we might know the things that have been what? Freely given to us of what? Of God. Which things we speak. Praise God. Which things we what? We speak. So it means that there is a capacity of deeper access. The capacity of enhanced insights into the deep things of God that is activated in the man that has been born again. It has been activated in the man that has been born again. Why? Because the man that has been born again has been born of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is the one that has access to all the deep things in God. So if you have been born of the Spirit of God, if you have the Spirit of God, it means you have access into all of the deep things in God. Which means there is nothing you need to know that you don't have access to knowing. You are not ordinary, you. Praise the Lord. So your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost dwells in you. And because the Spirit of God dwells in you, it means that when God talks to you, he does not need to shout. He does not need to be dramatic. Because he's closer to you than the very air you breathe. Praise God. Is closer to you than the very air that you breathe. Say aloud, the Holy Ghost dwells in me. The Holy Ghost dwells in me. Is closer to me than oxygen. Is closer to me than the air that I breathe. Very important. Amen. But God will lead you by the indwelling spirit. Your spirit within you. Now, this is the challenge with many Christians because many Christians are actually more, most times are body conscious. They are conscious of the physical more than they are of the spiritual. So you will find that many Christians would really want something to happen in the physical for them to pay attention. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? Now, let me give you an example. If you look at in uh, the book of Judges, How many of you remember the fleece? Who was the person that asked for a fleece? It, was it not Gideon? It was Gideon, right? Now, hmm. <laughs> Judges 6. Now, note this. A fleece. What is a fleece? Let's look at it. Judges chapter number 6. Verse 36. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. A fleece that is cutting wool. Let, let's just use cutting wool. I'll put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew on, be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. And it was so, for he rose up early on the morrow and thrust the fleece together and wring the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. That means God, the, the, the fleece got so soaked with water, but everywhere around was, was, was dry. Now look how this says. I get that to God. Let not thy anger be out against me. And I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece and upon all the ground. Let there be what? Dew. And God did so that time, for it was dry upon the fish, and there was dew on all the ground. So, what Gideon was asking for was for an occurrence in the physical dimension to be a sign to him that God was speaking. Are you following? Now, many believers like that. They will say things like, ah, God, if it's you speaking to me, let such and such and such happen. Let such and such and such happen. Now, why was Gideon like this? Gideon was like this because he did not have the Spirit of God on his inside. The Spirit of God was not indwelling Gideon, so he did not have that capacity to access the deep things of God inside him. You understand? So he could not know in him, praise God, 
what God wanted him to do. So he needed some drama outside of him for him to be able to know that God, that is why if you look at in the Old Testament, a lot of angels, burning bush, and things like that happened. Why did those things happen? Because so that men, because many of the folks in the Old Testament, they were men of the senses. I said they were men of the senses because they had not yet been born again. The born again experience, it is unique to the New Testament. It was only possible for men to be born again after Jesus rose from the dead. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23, being born again. Not of what? Corruptible seed, but of what? Incorruptible by the word of God that liveth and what? Abideth forever. So men got born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Who is the incorruptible seed of the word of God? Jesus Christ. So by the gospel of Jesus Christ, praise God, we translated from mortality to immortality. The immortality of God was deposited in our spirit, and in the future, it will what, be expressed in our what? Our bodies. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Gideon didn't have that. So he used fleeces. God talked to him using what? Fleeces. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm loving this mic, man. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody say, God punish poverty. God punish it. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Amen. <laughs> uh, you will never be poor. Amen. That's my prayer for you. You will never be poor in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me say it again. You will never be poor. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. You won't do ministry like a pauper. Amen. Say loud, amen. amen. Glory to God. Hmm. So, because of the indwelling spirit, you have the capacity to know God's mind. You have the capacity to know. Notice what I said, capacity. Eh? I said what? Ca now, the fact that something has capacity to do something, does it mean a person does it? No. Capacity is potential. If I said these beans has the potential to become a wagon. Sorry, for those of you watching abroad, a wagon is a form of delicacy that's made with beans. Praise God. Or you may call it lentils. We call it beans. But until you cook it and turn it into that delicacy, it will remain just beans. Have you noticed that every single thing God created, God didn't create it in the complete. You understand? Look at electricity. When God created electricity, He didn't create it like you didn't get light. Praise God. He, you know, He hid electricity in waterfalls. Praise the Lord. So the waterfall had the capacity to become what? Electricity. If you knew how to turn that waterfall through hydroelectric, you know, power into electricity. Praise God. So every believer has the capacity to hear God. Every believer has the capacity to discern the will of God, all right, if he knows, if he is trained, and if he does certain things. Because the leading of the Spirit, you are not imparted to hear God, you are taught how to discern what God is saying. Because you see, God is speaking to every Christian. If you are born of God, God is talking to you. But you now need to learn how to discern. Look at 1 Samuel chapter number 3. 1 Samuel chapter number 3 and verse 1. Very interesting story. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will touch on some things tonight. And those of you that come here, don't worry. We're going to lay hands. And we're not that much, because uh, I, I announced later that you could come to church. Praise God. Don't worry. Those of you that are watching from home, I'll give you through the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, sir. All righty. Now, first Samuel chapter 3 verse 1, can we read one to go? It says what? Mm -hmm. 
the way people are reading this thing, it's either you're hungry, or maybe there's an enemy, or something. He says, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. Who was Eli? Eli was a what? A backsliding high priest. I want you to pay attention. He has two sons. I remember you know them. Ophini and what? Phineas. Those guys were bad guys. Ophini and Phineas. Now, Ophini and Phineas were so bad that they were sleeping. You understand? They'll be offering, offering sacrifice. Then they'll be sleeping with the women. You know the tabernacle of Moses? They, they were, you know, there's the holies of holies. Then they'll be sleeping with the women where people offered offering. Brother, that's what they were, these guys were bad, bad guys. So God had already given up on them. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before you. Now, let me tell you something I've learned. Hey, I've learned something. The gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. But if God tells you to do something and you keep disobeying, the call will remain on your head. But that thing he told you to do, he will send someone else to do it. Now, when that other person does it, you will now see. This is what God told me to do. Ah! And when that person is doing this, it is a sign to you that you could have done it. I am going to come to certain things that make people doubt the leading of the Spirit. And makes it make you hinder the execution of God's plan over your life. Because by the time I am done, you will now understand and remember there were things God told you to do. That you didn't do because of one, two, three. Praise God. Now look at this. He says, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. That means, all right, word of the Lord here is talking about prophetic word. That means someone from the ministry of the prophet. Because Eli was backslidden. God was not talking to him anymore. Praise God. Ophinia and Phineas, obviously. God never spoke to these ones because they were always, the flesh was too loud. All right. He said, I'm to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no what? Open vision. No open vision. Nobody saw anything. Everybody was blind. And he now says in verse 2, everybody we want to go. It says what? Uh-uh. And it came to pass at that time, when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see. Remember, I'm talking to you that God is always speaking, but you need to be trained how to discern. Because there are many voices in the world. You need to be able to discern which one is God. Amen? Now, he said, it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not, what, see. So, um, the scripture is trying to paint something for us. It's telling us the, that the physical loss of sight that Eli had was descriptive of his spiritual condition. He couldn't see. Say allow me, my own eyes see. see. Come on, like, my eyes see. My, eyes see. my ears, they hear. My ears they hear. He says, and before the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Now, note something. The lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord. If you read in the law, that lamp was not supposed to go out. But under Eli, it was going out. Mm. Where the ark of God was. And the Lord, listen, it says, And the Lord called what? Samuel. And he answered, Here am I. And he ran where? He ran where? Eli. Unto Eli. And said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. Now, there is something I always ask myself. Why was it that um, Samuel ran to Eli when God called him. It must have been that the voice of God sounded like the voice of who? Eli. Hallelujah. Are, are you following? Are you following? It must be that the voice of God sounded like the voice of what? Of Eli. He says, and the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel, look now, everybody look at verse 7. Look at verse 7, everybody see. He says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet what? 
revealed unto him. Hallelujah. So when he says the word of the Lord was not yet revealed unto him, he's talking about the prophetic word. He had not started, stand, he had not started standing in the ministry, all right, in the office of a prophet. Hallelujah. Now, next verse. Now, I want to pay attention. Pay attention. And the Lord called somewhere again the third time. Now, <laughs> hold on. God called him three times. He ran to Eli. As long as he kept running to Eli, God didn't tell him anything. Many a times, the reason why many of you have not grown in the discernment of the voice of God is because the last time you heard from God, the thing God told you to do, you have not done it. When you heard from God, the response you gave was not the right response, so it didn't continue. There's something I found out. God would not give you a new instruction until the last one is obeyed. Because obedience to the last one is proof that you believe he was the one talking to you. Are you following? Come on, are you following? Look at it. And the Lord called Samuel again. So he kept calling and wanted it was only when Samuel would give the right response that another information would be given to him. But I want us to appreciate what Eli did for Samuel here. And Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli, look at it. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. So Eli perceived. How did Eli perceive? From experience. Because God had, he had worked with God before. He said, and Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, Go and lie down. And it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant what? Hear it. Notice this important thing. Speak, Lord, for thy servant what? Hear it. So that means your response must be to God that what you said, I heard you. You need to know the ways of the Spirit. Did you hear what I said? I'm not talking of Greek. And, I'm talking of the ways of the Spirit. You can share Greek and Hebrew on Twitter and be in disobedience to the Spirit. But you must understand it about the Spirit. That if the Spirit gives an instruction, until that instruction is obeyed, there's no, other, there's no next step. There's no turn the chapter. For example, we are planting a church in Lekki. Do you know when God gave us that instruction? 2016. It's five years. Five. Ah, in 2016, didn't we go and plant? We went. Praise God. But in 2016, we had not sorted out some things properly. You know, as we talk about the leading of the Spirit, I'm going to explain some other things. Praise God. It's a very wide subject. Hallelujah. Because some people say, I heard God say this. I obeyed, but things didn't turn out as I thought. You understand? I will explain certain things to you. Praise God. Praise God. Can we do something about that? Thank you. Hallelujah. So we went there. We planted the church. But do you know what happened? We got to the place. We didn't get speaker. We heard the first line of the instruction. Go and plant a church. We didn't hear the rest. Praise God. So we didn't prepare. We didn't pray. Okay, Lord, we saw season call. How will we raise the money? In fact, well, <laughs> we went to God. We just got one venue, one place like that. And we just went there, start church. There was no even pulpit. And we we're just sharing. <laughs> just sharing the word. Sharing. Sharing. You see the word? We packed up after six weeks. Hallelujah. We missed how to do it. Praise God. But the thing was, the instruction was still well there. So every time I was praying, oh Lord, next step, something, something, something. Holy Ghost will bring it back. Go and plant a church in Lekki. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's it. 
I'll give you another example. Every time I'm praying about surgery, the Lord will be telling me, why are you limiting the growth of this church? Praise God. That was why I said, last year, move! Have deep waters. Remember, COVID now hit. Remember that? I'm even remember that now. COVID hit. Ah! We have to come back. So that's how it is. When he gives you an instruction, he is looking for a response. It is your response that will trigger another set of instruction. It's like when God tells you, give. I'm going to come to things that does not allow us to respond and follow the leading of the Spirit. Amen. And how you can actually break those barriers. One major way to break the barriers is obedience. When you are obeying, you have to learn that many times when the Spirit of God is leading you, you are going to do things even afraid. Not afraid, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be doing it. You are not sure. But there is faith in your heart that the Spirit of God word spoke to you. But as you now mature and grow in the things of God, you will learn that when God speaks to you, he settles it. You now say, afraid? No, I'm not afraid. I heard God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I heard God, and because I heard God, I'm fine. Now let's continue. And Lord caught Samuel again that the third time. Okay, uh-huh. So now, Eli tells him what to do. So that means Eli is saying there is a correct response to when God visits you. There is a correct response to when God does what? Speak to you. Now, he says, speak, Lord, for thy servant, what? Hear it. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. Next verse. And the Lord called Samuel, um, Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Samuel, Samuel. Now, when you see something repeated again and again, what is that telling you? This is telling you that this is not a... Um, this is not, um, what do you call it? This is not accidental or it's not luck. This is God's character. God will come and he will call to you. Praise God. He calls Samuel four times. Hallelujah. And the Lord came and stood and called us at other times. Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak for thy servant Herod. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall what? Shall tingle. And he was still talking to Samuel in the voice that sounded like who? Eli. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What this tells us very clearly is this. It will be easier for you as a believer to discern the voice of the Lord. Praise God. If you have a voice speaking to you regularly about the Lord. Did you hear what I said? I said as a believer, it will be easier for you to discern the voice of the Lord if you have a voice you recognize that he's speaking to you regularly about the Lord. Eli was Samuel's pastor. I hope you know that. Praise the Lord. And Eli learned the law from um, sorry, Samuel learned the law from Eli. Praise God. It is difficult for someone who is not sitting under a ministry gift to regularly and consistently discern God's voice. Hallelujah. Amen. You find out that someone who is in the church, you know, working there, serving there, learning there, he will say things like, all right, while I was sleeping, I had a dream, my pastor appeared to me and was giving me instructions. He's the Holy Ghost talking to the person. But the person, the Holy Ghost appears to the person like his pastor. Many of you have had times you see me in your dream and I'll be talking to you and giving instructions. That's, you see, what, what's, going, what's going on there? I'm not there. I'm sleeping in my house or praying. Praise God. But what's going on there is that God will speak to you through the voice of your instructors. God will speak to you through the voice of your what? Of your fathers and your teachers, such that when the Spirit of God is talking to you, you will discern His voice through your instructors, your pastors. Hallelujah. That is why when the devil gives you a dream, Based on the teaching you have received here, if it is a bad dream, what do you do? You reject it. Why? 
because the word of God you have received here, all right, has said that this dream I have seen cannot be for me. Why? I'm born again. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, God tells him, in that day I will perform against Eli all things which are spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will, now, 13, for I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. All right? All right? The sons made themselves vile, and what? We will he restrain them not. So that is Eli's sins. Eli allowed his sons. Eli's sin was not that he sinned personally. Eli's sin was that what? He what? He saw his children sin, and he allowed it. Praise God. Praise God. I said, praise God. So, Samuel was able to discern, praise the Lord, he was able to discern the voice of the Lord because of an instruction he received from Eli. Samuel heard the voice of God and called it the voice of man. Which means, pay attention to what I'm telling you, which means that one of the first mistakes you will make as a believer, is that you will hear God and call it your own mind. You will hear God and call it something else. You will hear people saying things like, something told me, or I, 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 some thoughts came to my mind, but I felt it was me. Are you, have you heard people say stuff like that? I thought it was me. I thought it was me that was making it up. You understand? All right? It is normal. Just as Samuel heard God and thought a man was talking to him on, and thought it was physical, so also many will hear God and think it is them. It is not every time God spoke in the Old Testament that men were 100% sure that it was God. Sometimes they thought it was a man or somebody else calling them because God called them with the voice of a man. But it was not a man that was taught, calling them. It was what? God. Are you seeing what I'm saying here? Come on, I, do you understand? Very important. So there is a place of discerning the voice of God. Amen? Discerning the voice of God. Hallelujah. Now, remember last week we talked about the inward witness. Turn to Romans chapter 8. Discerning the voice of God. Hey, my brother, let me tell you something about God. When God sends a man, God does not give him all of the information. When God sends a woman, God does not give her all of the information. Praise God. He will tell you, go. You go. Says go to point A. When you get to point A, you need another instruction. Praise God. Now, if he told you, go, and you are here, and you have not gone, you know there is nothing else to tell you. Because you have not gone. Are you following what I'm saying? Which means, being able to succeed in the purpose of God for your life is, the, is tied to your ability to hear God. Listen to me. A man can know new creation realities and not fulfill destiny. A man can be full of sound doctrine in his head. That means he has listened to tapes and he can be full of it and said, I'm not fulfilling anything. It is the man that is able to follow the leading of the Spirit. Because you see, in the leading of the Spirit, many of the things the Spirit of God will tell you to do are time bound. If God tells a man, serve me when he was 20 years old. If the man waited to 60 before he served God, you know he has missed a lot. Praise the Lord. If when God told Moses, rise up, do everything when he was 80 years old, he didn't obey until he was 120. At 120, could this achieve much? No. The instructions of God have time parameters. There's a time, you understand? So there are times when the Spirit of God will tell you something that is for the future. Then there are times the Spirit of God will tell you something now, get thee. You understand? Now. But if you are such a person that can't design God's voice, God will be talking to you 
and you'll be deaf. There are times and seasons. Gen- Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. The Bible says, Seed time and harvest, cold and winter shall not cease on the earth. That's talking about agriculture. Praise God. All right. But you see, in the Bible, many a times there are certain things you read in scripture. All right, there is a contextual interpretation of what is said. Praise God. And there is, um, um, how will I put it now? Um, there is a lesson to be learned from what is said. For example, when Paul says, now, as long as an heir, when he's a child, as long as an heir is a child, is what? Kept under tutors. Galatians chapter number 4, verse 1. He's kept under what? Tutors and governors unto the time what? Appointed by the what? By the father. Though he is what? Lord of all. Now, in the context of that, he was talking about what? The Jews. The nation of Israel. All right? Saying that as long as the Jews, praise God, were nepios. That means as long as the Jews were children. All right? They were kept under tutors and governors. What's the tutor and the governor? The law. The law of Moses. Until the time appointed of the father. What was the time appointed of the father? The coming of Christ. So, when Jesus came, all right, they were released from what? The tutors and what? Governors. But as long as they were children, they couldn't enter into their inheritance. They had the inheritance but couldn't control it. Are you following what I'm saying here? Are you following what I'm saying here? Praise God. So that's a principle, you, you know. So there is a context of which he's saying, but when you read it, you understand you, there's a lesson. So also in Genesis 8, 22, time and seasons. In Ecclesiastes, they said there's a time to be born and there's a time to what? To die. Praise God. So, it means that all time is not time. In scriptures, we have two words used for time. You have chronos and you have what? Kairos. You remember the Bible talks about, it says, um, for now is the set time. The set time to, um, um, to um, it says, uh, what is it? it's talking about, it said the set time for, of Zion has come. So the set time there is talking about the time definite in which something pre-appointed by God would happen. So you, Kairos time is talking about specific times, seasons, where definite occurrences will happen. For example, the death of Jesus, that is Kairos. Praise God. All right, the resurrection of Jesus, that is what? Kairos. Because the death, the resurrection of Jesus changed everything. Praise God. For Kronos time, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, that's Kronos. So there's a specific time you are supposed to do some things. The Spirit of God quickens us, praise God, in specific times and seasons of our lives where we are supposed to take particular steps. If we are not able to discern the leading of God, at those times we miss our opportunity. When God, the Spirit of God spoke to Philip, join this chariot, if he didn't join it, and he waited for one, year, one day to pass, before I joined the chariot, would the chariot still be there? I said, would the chariot still be there? He would have missed the opportunity. And what would he have missed out? He would have missed out on the opportunity of getting the gospel to where? To Africa. Because that guy was an Ethiopian eunuch. And after he got born again, that guy took the gospel to Africa. And that is why one of the uh, first countries to embrace the gospel was Ethiopia. If you understand church history, you understand that there was actually, right now, there is a pope in Ethiopia. A bishop of Ethiopia. The Orthodox Church. Hallelujah. It was started by the Ethiopian eunuch. Glory to God. So imagine he disobeyed. That is to let you know, there are consequences for disobeying the leading of the Spirit. There are what? consequences for disobeying the leading of the Spirit. Some consequences, it is only eternity that will let us know. So imagine if he didn't obey. It means that Africa would not have gotten the gospel when God wanted, when God has said it is time for them to get the gospel. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Imagine if God, if Paul didn't obey and go to Jerusalem so he could be captured and then taken to Rome so he could testify before Caesar. There are consequences for disobedience. That is why, all right, 
One important skill, one important attribute a believer, every believer must have, must be that he must have the capacity to discern the leading of the Spirit. So we said, one major way God leads us is through the inward witness. Romans chapter number 8. So, ikizia, eleko sopratis. Yana makori nyapasite kesete. Media, are we live on YouTube? I don't seem to be able to see anything. Praise the Lord. Are we live? I'm asking. No, I'm not asking you. I'm asking Fisaya. I can't see anything. Praise the Lord. The inward witness, Romans chapter number 8. And verse 14. What does he say? He says what? As many as are led, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Praise God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. All right? Then verse 15, what does he say? So we have not received the bondage, the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption where, uh, whereby we cry, what? Abba, Father. Now, verse 16, it now says, all right, the spirit itself, himself, bear witness with our spirit that we are what? All right, that we are what? The children of God. We are the children of God. So that means the testimony of the inward spirit the testimony of the spirit that dwells on our inside agrees with the testimony of what? Of the Holy Ghost that we are what? Children of God. So that means that if God is going to actually lead you, he will lead you by the inward witness. Now let me explain what the inward witness is in a very, very clear form. Remember last week I said, every single thing that is going to happen, that is happening, and we, every single thing that has happened, that is going to happen, and that is happening, is already in the Holy Ghost. Remember I said that? Remember I said that? So in your spirit man, all the information concerning what has happened, what is happening, what will happen, is already in your spirit. Praise God. Now, whenever you are exposed, glory to God, with choices to be made, let's say, for example, someone comes to you and says, all right, um, there are two businesses to invest in. There is business A and there is business B. And you want to decide which one you should invest in. Do you know what the inward witness is? The inward witness is that activity where you expose that your, in, your, your spirit man to those two choices. Hallelujah. Remember, everything that has happened, that is happening... And that will happen is already where in your spirit. So what you are doing, the spirit of the Lord is the, the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the world in what parts of the valley. What is going on is that you are exposing what your spirit man that is the candle of the Lord to those choices. Hallelujah. The one your spirit does not recognize is the wrong one. The one your spirit recognizes is the right one. So you find out that when you are exposed to those choices, the right one is the one your spirit will say, yes, that's it. You will have a witness. What is a witness? A witness means it will what? Agree. It will what? Testify. Hallelujah. That, that is the one. That is the one. That is the one. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is the one. You have a green light. That is the one. You want to marry someone, you want to start dating, you're going to find out that when you meet the person, all right, you should go with, praise God, in your spirit, your spirit, man, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Hallelujah. Now, there are some times when many of us, they, we, we, we wrongly discern the leading of the spirit. You know, as you can rightly divide the word, you can wrongly divide the word. So also, you can wrongly discern. So, for example, you know, in the Old Testament, God will speak to a prophet. You say, man, uh, son of man, what do you what? What do you what? What do you see? It's an important question. 
It's an important question. Peter had a vision. In the vision, what did he see? Unclean animals descending in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, uh, like a platform, and the spirit said, arise and eat. Now, when Peter saw that vision, he saw unclean things that should not be what? Eating. Amen. By the time the vision was explained to him, God was telling him, don't call what I have called clean, what? Unclean. It means that initially, Peter wrongly discerned the leading of the spirit. Until God did what? Corrected him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, the inward witness. Oh, you meet this person. You have this, you understand. Oh, you expose because your spirit man already knows who you are going to marry. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? Your spirit man is not being informed. No. Your spirit man has the Holy Ghost. So because your spirit man is born of the Holy Ghost, praise God, your spirit man has access to all of the information, all of the choices you should make. It's in your spirit. Your spirit man is eternal. So your spirit man does, is, does not get to know. Your spirit already knows. Your spirit already knows. The Bible says that we have received the spirit which is of God that we might what? Know the things that have been what? Freely given to us of God. So that means that the man who is born again knows. It is a present continuous tense. He knows. So we don't pray for your spirit man to know. Your spirit man already knows. Your spirit man knowing is an inheritance in Christ. Praise God. It is now for you to discern what your spirit already knows. And how do you do that? Via the inward witness. The testimony of your spirit. The testimony. Your spirit is saying, yes, that's correct. Praise God. How many of you have ever listened to somebody talking and you picked it up in your spirit that the person is lying? How many of you know what I'm talking about? You didn't hear a voice, but you just, something within your spirit did not agree with what they were saying. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, that is the inward witness. You, you, you understand? So that means your spirit man, your inward spirit testified against what they were saying. So because there's a testimony against, that means your spirit man is saying it's wrong. What this person is saying is wrong. So it's the same way you can be with somebody. You are, this you want to marry the person. But every single time you are with the person, your inward will be saying this is not your husband or this is not your wife. I don't even know what I'm talking about. You are dating someone, yes, what are you doing with this person? So you are just there. Everything can even be perfect. Everything can, you know, be nice and every single thing. But your inward witness is saying this is not the person. It's not that the person is bad. Sometimes many of us think that when the Spirit of God is warning us against somebody or someone or something, it is because that person is bad. No, it's not because the person is bad. It's because in your spirit, in what was designed for you, that person has no part to play. Or the, part, the role the person is to play is not what you are thinking the person is to play. And if you make a mistake and go against the leading of the spirit, you have brought yourself into probabilities you shouldn't bring yourself into. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's why you must never ignore that drawback, that no, that yes that your spirit tells you. Now, let me tell you one major reason why people do not follow the leading of the Spirit. The number one reason is fear. Number one reason is fear. Number one. That is reason number one. Fear. Fear. So God tells you, sow a seed of one million naira for that project in church. Sow a seed of 10 million naira. Clear your account. All right. Um, go to this person and tell the person this. Or go to this person and give the person a message. The one by one reason why you will not, most people don't respond is that they are afraid. What if I give the money and I don't, I go hungry? Do you understand? What if I, what if, yeah. 
here. Only God knows what fear has robbed the body of Christ of. Fear. Yeah. Fear. Yeah. Fear. Yeah. Remember when Jesus took the five loaves and two fish? Imagine if the boy was afraid he would get no lunch back. What would have happened? He would have missed out on that word, miracle. Imagine Moses gets, leads the children of Israel to the Red, Red Sea. Right? They had left Egypt and they were staying, you know, just chilling by the Red Sea, trying to figure out how they would cross. They've not gotten any information, but they wanted to just rest. Then they talk and look around and they see what? The Egyptians coming. Moses cries to God, God, Afana, hey, these guys are around. God now says, What is wrong with you? But if you look at the construction in the Hebrew, God was saying to Moses, What's wrong with you? What is your stretch for you? You understand? Basically, what he was saying is, you have no reason to be crying to me. I gave you a rod. That rod turned to snake. Then turned. All the miracles you work in Egypt, how did you do it? It was not with that rod. So why is it that you got to the Red Sea and you thought that the response to the power of God on your life would be different? Because it's a Red Sea. Irresponsive of the challenge you are facing. I have put my power on you. I have put my spirit in you. So why are you afraid? Yeah. Yeah. Fear is the number one paralyzer. Fear is the number one thing that always makes folks doubt whether God is speaking to them and always makes folks what? All right, be um, resistant to following the leading of the spirit. Fear. Fear. Tell out, I'm a man of faith. Lord, I'm a man of faith. I have not received the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. God needs men when he says, go here, and you go. You find out that folks that are quick to obey and are always following the leading of the spirit, they always have adventures in God. Adventures in God is not possible without following. Adventures in God is not possible without obedience. So that's why you will find that men, glory to God, that have adventures are usually men that are continually obeying God's leading. And women also. Men, men in Christ. Men in Christ is not gender. Praise God. There's neither men or women. Do I need to say if any man slash woman? He said if any man be in Christ, which means women are inside. So in Christ, there is neither male nor what? Female. Because the woman came out of the man. Praise God. So women's rights are men's rights. Because when men understand who the woman is, they will never abuse the woman. When women understand who the man is, they will never abuse the man. Because for a man to abuse a woman is to abuse himself. And for a woman to abuse a man is to abuse herself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So injustice against genders is usually due to a lack of understanding of who we are. Amen. To men of exploits, women of exploits are those who are constantly following the leading of the Spirit. Because it is in the path of obedience, in the path of following the leading of the Spirit, angels will meet you there. Hallelujah. Angelic activity. Angelic activity is abundant where people are following God's leading. Remember, God was leading the children of Israel through the wilderness. The Bible talks about there were angels around them. He says there was a pillar of um, cloud by, uh, by day and a pillar of fire by what? By night. Angels. Angels. When they disobeyed and said they were going to fight when God said um, they shouldn't. Remember after 40 days, those guys went to bring a bad report. Then after God rebuked them, they now said, we are sorry. Let's go. Hold on. Let me tell you something about the Lord. Let me just say it again. Just let's paint that picture. Just hold on. Twelve spies go into the promised land. They come back with the, uh, ten come back with a bad report. Right? Right? Good. Two says we can take the land. After everybody has spoken, then after they gave the bad report, 
the two Caleb spoke said their own, the people did not listen to the two. They listened to the ten. Then everybody began to cry. We are like grasshoppers, idiots. We are finished. Ah, Moses. 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 Ah. Yeah, Jeremy. 40 days. Why did he just dig it? God now comes and says, eh, you are grasshoppers. Said, as you have said in my ear, so shall it what? So shall it do unto you. None of you will enter that land. So after the end, eh, ah, no, okay, no, 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 don't worry. We will, don't worry, we believe you. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Mm. A lack of obedience to the leading of the Spirit can let a journey of 40 days become a journey of what? 40 years. Why didn't they believe? Why did those guys come with a... Do you know that those spies, before they went to check out the land, they believed they would take the land. Based on what Moses said, until they saw what? The giants. Which means fear talked them out of the leading of the Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Fear. As a minister, so I tell you how fear can cripple, you understand, you know, so I tell you how, you will find that God will tell you to do something. Then you will now consider how much it will cost for you to do it. Then you will now be afraid of failure. See? You know, there's, I said fear. Fear is a broad term. That fear can now break it down. There is fear of failure. How many of you know what I'm talking about? For example, they said, let us prophesy. Hands are laid on you. Amen. They now say prophesy. Do you know the first thing that will stop you from opening your mouth to prophesy? The fear that when you prophesy, you will say it wrong. Is that not correct? Are you following? Now, the truth about it is there is something you wanted to say. Praise God. Ah, because God is not a liar. If hands are laid on you by a man of God, receive the ability to prophesy, it means the ability to prophesy has to be activated. All you now have to do is open your mouth and what? Prophesy. So you find that there's something to say, but you are afraid you will, if you, you understand? You are afraid. You know what I'm saying? It's like, ah, and there was something, no. Ah. The, the fear of failure has robbed many people of the blessings of God. Yeah. 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 The fear of failure. The fear of being laughed at. They will laugh at me. The fear of being mocked at. But you have not been given the spirit of fear. Which means that when you are afraid, you have permitted a contrary spirit. Fear is a spirit. That's why I said we have not been given the spirit of what? Fear. The spirit. That's why we're not drunk with wine, wearing his excess, but be what? Feed with what? Spirit. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So what's important? When God tells you to do something, do it. Sometimes, let me tell you something. How you're going to deal with fear is that when God tells you to do something, don't give time for your brain to start calculating it. Just do it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, they said to give a lot of you, speak to Elizabeth and tell her so, 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 and so. Before you have time to process it, just speak to her. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just speak to her. Tell her what the Lord says. She said, Amen. I said, Amen. God says, Give $10,000. You, you, you know. You got it. You know. Praise God. Give $10,000. You are now afraid that if you give that $10,000, you will starve. How? 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 Are you saying the person that said you should give it is wicked? What you say about God is that you will say that you now be asked a question. Have you noticed something about this God that I, I always wonder about it? I don't know whether you two you wonder about it, but me, I wonder. 
If you tell you to give $10,000, but you, the amount of money you have is $10,500. I should give $10,000. And I found out what God always is doing. He's training you. He's training me. Why? Because he's taking, say, give the 10000 away. He's now wanting to say, will you trust me? Are you following? Look at the five loaves and two fish. The question was not whether God could multiply the bread and fish. It is, do you trust me that I have something else at the end of this small thing you have? Five loaves and two, how much is it? Are you following? It's nothing. But it's training. It's like God tells Abraham, Look at it. Look at the instruction he gave Abraham in Genesis 12. He says, get out of your father's house. Get out of your kindred. He says to a land that we show you. So he didn't tell him the name of the land. He said, I will still show you, but right now, just get out. Which means, Abraham obeyed an incomplete instruction. Be waiting for incomplete instruction. Complete instruction. Wait, wait. Wait for God to give you a textbook. <laughs> hey, praise God. If he did not give Abraham, he won't give you. Because it's a journey of what? Hey. So there is a place of faith in the leading of the Spirit. Well, remember why I talked about it? Number one reason why people don't follow the leading of the Spirit is fear. Now, let me tell you where fear comes from. Fear comes from the root of fear is condemnation. The root of fear is what? Condemnation. Condemnation. That sense that you are not worthy. That sense and consciousness that your sins and your iniquities will cause you not to attain something, you know, something, 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 something. Condemnation. The man who is Christ conscious will lose all fear. Hallelujah. The man who is Christ conscious has lost all fear, and you're going to find out that when he takes steps, he takes assuring steps. But it's a journey anyway. So you may not start out like that. You will grow into it. Hallelujah. You will grow into it. You will grow into it. Praise the Lord. You will grow into it. You will grow into it. Look at your neighbor and say, live unafraid. Look at your neighbor and say, live unafraid. Be fearless. Be fearless. I said, be fearless. You will not be able to take down Goliath without following the leading of the Spirit. Because many folks, <laughs> well, God led David to Goliath. God led Jesus to the cross. God led Paul to be captured and taken to what? To Rome. So the leading of the Spirit does not always mean that you'll be led to a palatable place for your flesh. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because the goal of the Spirit is the greater good. What is the greater good? That Christ be what? Magnified. Some of you, the Lord may lead you to sell a, your car. To give towards a church planting. It may tell you to sell something precious to you that will hurt your flesh. Amen. How you will know somebody is hearing from God is that God will begin to lead them to do the things that are not comfortable or convenient for their flesh. You begin to lead them to do things that does not glorify them but glorify him. He will begin to lead them to do things that places him and his agenda first than them. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Are you people listening to what I'm telling you? Amen. The leading of the Spirit. So listen. Listen to me. Everybody look up. It's step by step. When the first step is required, until you take it, you don't go to the next level. Like God said, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. The law of recognition had to be satisfied. Somewhere had to recognize it was first of all God. 
So you also need to recognize that it is God talking to you in the inward need witness and the inward voice. When you have that desire, that leading, ah, I should do this, I should do this, I should join the workforce, I should join them for outreaches. Some of you, the Spirit of God says, ah, they're going for outreach, I should go. Amen. Amen. Ah, they are, I mean, look at church, look at everybody is active and doing something. I should invite this person to church, oh. Until you learn to yield to the voice and obey that leading, another one will not come. Hallelujah. Another one will not come. Another one will not come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many people like Holy, Holy Ghost Romance. You know what I call Holy Ghost Romance? That's why I call Holy Ghost Romance. The Holy Ghost was talking to me. What was he telling you? He was telling me, I love you. I will get... Okay, good. We thank God for that one. Now, when did he give you an instruction? You are not, should I tell you something? That when people are... When you are... You know, someone's listening to God and God is talking to the person. God doesn't fellowship without instructing. Amen. Show me when they were God was talking to somebody and they were just talking, I love you, I've called you, I <laughs> show me. There's no place. He doesn't fellowship with that. The purpose of fellowship is to instruct. Because instruction brings clarity. He always tells them to do something. Go ye. Go ye. Come up, Peter. There's an instruction. Sometimes, some folks, you know, you understand? That's why people that are just express break up. They use the Holy Ghost to get to, you know, you understand? So, they are, <laughs> it's not Holy Ghost they are talking to. Because if it's Holy Ghost, they will, <laughs> Holy Ghost. He loves me. I love him. Yeah, I heard he hugged me. He embraced me. What did he tell you to do? Nothing. Holy Ghost. You have an imaginary boyfriend. That's what you have. It's not Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Holy Ghost did. Ah, ah, you fellowship with him for three days. He didn't get. Ah, ah. So people have been fellowship with Holy Ghost. They've never. The Holy Ghost fellowship has not told them to go and preach. Doesn't tell them to give. Doesn't tell them to join workforce. Doesn't tell them to join a cell. It doesn't tell them to serve the purpose of the Lord Jesus. Holy Ghost, too, that came for the purpose of Jesus Christ. He didn't tell you anything like that. He has just been telling you that he loves you. And telling you to boil rice and the shirt you should wear. That's the one some Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost tells them. And the gown they should wear. Praise God. That's the only thing they hear. Holy Ghost is the spirit of instruction. The Bible calls him the spirit of what? Counsel. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Are you learning anything tonight? Are you glad you came tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. I said, Amen. Very important. Very important. We must understand this. Hallelujah. 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 The leading of the Spirit must be obeyed for it to increase and for you to become better at what? Discerning it. Amen. The Lord says, Give, give. Amen. The Lord says, Go here, go. Praise God. The Lord said, do this, do it. Amen. That obedience will prompt another instruction. So you now find out that from instruction to instruction, instruction to instruction, you will get from, all right, um, Chaldea, like Abraham, you will get to Bethel. Then from Bethel, you will, before you know it, you will land in Canaan. Hallelujah. Instruction to what? Instruction. But if you keep staying in the place of disobedience, you will still stay in that spot where God gave you that instruction and you refuse to move. Lift up your hands and just pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You have just listened to a message by Reverend Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. For other messages, visit our website at www.oikiacc.org. Remain blessed.